The trouble with men, depression, suicide, and feeling too tough to talk. We'll examine the so-called silent crisis in mental health. I'm Martin Stanford. This is Insight. Welcome to Insight. Men have a problem, and failing to talk about it can be fatal. Mental health issues can be hard enough to discuss for anyone, but figures show that in many Western countries, men are now three to four times more likely to take their own lives than women. A campaign involving the British royal family and the global star Lady Gaga is the latest to try to encourage men to open up and seek help when they need it most. Our senior correspondent Dana Lewis has our main report. My name is Johnny Benjamin. Six years ago, on the 14th of January 2008, at around 10 a.m. I came to Waterloo Bridge to take my life. Johnny Benjamin tells an extraordinary story of wrestling with a demon in his head until one day it literally pushed him to the edge of a London bridge. I, I, I didn't see any other way out. I didn't, how else, there, there was no other way out really. From, from It was constant pain, constant pain, mental, mental turmoil and pain. I mean, what's, I don't want to live like that anymore. And the only way out of it was to, was to jump. He didn't jump, only because a passerby, Neil Laybourne, decided in a split second he couldn't ignore a stranger in distress. So he stopped and talked, talked for hours. I just felt that this, this young guy um, may need some help. I didn't know 100% that he was there to jump off the bridge, but he looked like he needed help. They didn't see each other for six years after that. But they were reunited when Johnny launched an online campaign to find the man who had talked him down and saved his life. And secretly I was going... And now the two are poster boys for speaking out about helping out those in distress. There's a lot. In the UK, for men under the age of 45, the leading cause of death is suicide. We're in the last mile of the London Marathon. These two just ran the London Marathon together, part of Team Heads Together an impressive group sponsored by none other than the royals, Princes William and Harry and the Duchess of Cambridge, Kate Middleton. Remember those heart-wrenching scenes when the two little princes walked behind the casket of their mother, Princess Diana? Well, now, 20 years later, they're speaking out about how that deeply affected them. And the motto of the British stiff upper lip, don't express your feelings and soldier on, goes against good mental health. We've never really talked about it. We've never really talked about um, losing a mum at such a young age. And when you speak to other people's families and little kids and stuff, you think, wow, you know, I don't want them to have to go through the same thing. So you want to, with, with a little bit of experience, you want to help as much as you can. Prince William. Hello, Lady Gaga. Celebrities like Lady Gaga are putting their heads together with the royals. It's all about the need to be open about depression. She suffered with depression for years. In my life, I go, oh my goodness, look at all these beautiful, wonderful things that I have, and I should be so happy. But you can't help it if in the morning when you wake up, you are so tired, you are so sad, you are so full of. Um, anxiety and the shakes that you can barely think. Uh, team from People US, who have fought uh, depression say the biggest roadblock to asking for help is overcoming the embarrassment and social stigma attached to mental illness. Having this, this stiff upper lip and not talking about it and being macho, it's not working. And it gets to the point where, you know, just trying to push it down inside is not enough. You have to talk about it and let it out. And if you don't, you're going to feel like you're the only person in the world who's going through this, and it's just not the case. The World Health Organization paints a bleak picture when it comes to the growing problem of mental health issues. Globally, they say there are 300 million people suffering from depression, a suicide once every 40 seconds. In poorer countries, only about 10% of people suffering from depression get the kind of help that they need. And in first world countries, it's still a big taboo to talk about depression. Why is suicide on the increase? Experts cite economic hardship and displaced breadwinners, traditionally men struggling to find their way in a challenging world. Socioeconomic deprivation and redundancy in particular. And redundancy is one of the big um, background stresses for men who do kill themselves. Research has shown that for each, lung, uh, each rung we go down the socioeconomic ladder, rates of suicide increase. 
So rates of suicide are 10 times greater in men in the most deprived areas as compared with the most affluent areas. As economic hardship has increased, suicide rates in the U.S. have soared to a 30-year high. Not just men, but the suicide rate for women aged 45 to 64 is up 63% over five years. The availability of opiate painkillers have been linked to people taking their own lives. And there's social media pressure cited as contributing to teenage suicide, say experts. Increasingly, schools are being asked, why aren't we talking to young people about where they can get help? At this stage in life, you meet many challenges, many changes, uh, changes in your relationships, changes in your own body, changes in, in the requirements you have, there are school exams. Uh, so there are um, many areas where uh, young people may find difficulties. 15, uh, Johnny and Neil now speak America. to all kinds of groups, from students to business really people about coping with depression. Say, the messages are simple, then, listen uh, to people. Just, just the feedback is phenomenal that people want to engage and, and talk and, and speak about it, but you know, more people need to need to really, yeah, be opening to, to listening, not just not just opening up if they have an experience. We need to we need to be there to listen to people as well. And don't be ashamed to talk. And the most important thing he said to me that no one has said to me before, he said, I think you'll get better. And and that's what I needed to hear. And and you know, we talk to people and they they're not told that enough that you will get better. You can get through this. Um, there's such little hope out there. So that's what we, we try and do. We, we try and um, instill that hope, you know, and, and that message of recovery. Annually, there are 800,000 suicides globally. Messages of hope and openness have taken on regal urgency. I'm Dana Lewis reporting for Insight. Well, to discuss that further, I'm joined by the psychotherapist Lucy Beresford, and also with us today is Mark Rowland, who is a director at the Mental Health Foundation charity. Welcome to you. Let me give you a quote from another man, similar circumstances, I think, to the one we saw in the film. We men don't share any problems that we face because we think it makes us vulnerable and weak. Some have been taught to show that we are tough since childhood. Is that something you hear a lot? I hear it all the time, not just in my clinical practice, but we hear it anecdotally. And there are two reasons for that. It is partly society's expectations of how to raise young boys and to teach them to be macho, masculine, stiff upper lip people. But there is simply also a physiological um, aspect to this, which is that girls and women actually release feel-good hormones when they chat to each other and soothe each other and reassure each other verbally. And men don't? Which it doesn't work in quite the same way so men can often not simply understand why women like to talk about their feelings and they often say to me what would be the point why, why would I want to do this they don't necessarily have experience of how therapeutic how beneficial it can be having a meal together having a social night out down the pub does that not do the same sort of thing for men as Lucy's well, group I'm, of women I'm not sure it does because I think the important point that you mentioned and what we saw in the clip from Johnny Benjamin is this question about vulnerability and your, abili and, and your ability and willingness to open the door into how things really are for you. Yeah. And so it's not just the uh, quantity of human contact, it is about the quality. And you know the studies that we have seen, we, we did one last year looking at uh, about 2,500 people and we asked uh, men and women with mental health problems and we asked, you know, are you willing, have you been willing to open up? And uh, the men in the study were 50% less likely to actually open up. And so mm. it's great to be at the pub. The question is what's happening down the pub? What questions are being asked and what answers are being given? What's the difference between the ones who answered, yes, I did open up, and know the ones who said I couldn't possibly open up. And did you find, you know, what a, why do would some do it and some not? Well, there is, you know, there's an emerging younger generation who are more willing to talk, and we've seen that with the the royals in the UK uh, just last week, where mm. I think their parents probably wouldn't have spoken about their emotional lives. And uh, I think this, this is what we need to get to: a culture uh, of of openness where where the mental health literacy, where we understand a little bit more about how we're made up. And I think, um, and Lucy will be able to say better than me, but when, when you talk about parenting, uh, we talk a lot about conditions of worth, and this is how you are told you are valuable. 
And if your conditions of worth happen to be around strength, and if they happen to be about external success, and if they happen to be uh, around overcoming the odds and being tough, it's very difficult to then feel like being vulnerable is something that's safe to do. Mm. And also we've got an extra dimension to that sense of worth, which is social media, whereby you value yourself because you have a thousand friends on Facebook or several thousand retweets of your tweet. And that idea that you're validated by things that are very ephemeral and almost non-existent. You know, would these people that say you're, they're your friends, would they know you if mm. you pass them in the street? Well, they're street? not your friends in the, in the old you fashion can't, definition of a friend, And they? therefore, instinctively, you know you can't open up to them. So, in fact, you have a community around you but you don't have anybody that you can actually talk to and yet we probably know people if we use social media a few what I would probably feel instinctively over emote and share far too much Overshare. with hundreds of strangers and you think is that healthy it, it isn't healthy because you're not learning the flip side of learning to be vulnerable and comfortable with your emotions which is a certain degree of resilience now mm. in my clinical practice mm. I'm trying to straddle both those things I'm trying to encourage people mm. to be open to get in touch with their feelings to create a, a vocabulary for it mm. but to nevertheless have a resilience whereby they can deal with the knocks of life which we're all going to have. I was going to ask you that, because that's a kind of starting point here. How do we tell the difference? How do we learn to tell the difference between somebody who is, is suffering a lack of that kind of resilience or just a, a modicum of toughness just to deal with the stuff that life throws at you from time to time and somebody who is seriously ill? Mm. How, how do you tell the difference? Do you know? Well, at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's a clinical decision, that boundary. But with mental health, because it is on a spectrum, it is very difficult to, to say. And I think one of the balances we've got wrong culturally is that we've tended to dismiss mental health concerns as not being serious and the, the kind of pull your, pull your socks up and get yeah. on with it approach. Uh, and I think we may well, the pendulum may swing to the other side where uh, the, the sort of over-diagnosis of mental health may become a reality where... Uh, I, mean, I suppose what I'm putting crudely is, are we breeding a generation of indulgent people who cannot deal with anything but just you know, put the hand up and say, oh, I'm sorry, I, I, you know, I can't do this anymore. I have to say, for me, it would be better if people would, would acknowledge that they're struggling rather than okay. to go the other mm. way and say, no, no, then absolutely, everything mm. is fine. As and a I'm... generation ago or a generation ago, exactly. stiff you know, up a lip, as we The parents that we UK. had, you know, yeah. who went through the war, for example, who did yeah. generally have that tough approach, it leaked out in other ways. Mm. Clinically, you could see that there was, you know, a rise in alcoholism or anger issues mm. or depression. And this, of course, is where suicide kicks in. So, so Suicide is a commentary mm. on the despair that someone is, is feeling, and that is clearly yeah. the moment at which you know that someone has been suffering too much, and that's never a good place to be. And we need to educate ourselves, do we, not only to be able to self-diagnose when is the right time, to have the confidence to ask for help, but also to maybe to be literate enough to see it in others? Yeah. Certainly to be open and non-judgmental enough to be able to ask that question. As Mark was mm. saying, sometimes it's about the quality of the conversation. Yes, by all means, go to the football match or the pub with your mates mm. every week. But every once in a while, if you suspect that your friend is looking a bit down in the dumps or is, you know, antsy about something or is constantly ruminating about maybe a work problem, that's the moment to chip in and say, is everything okay? Mm. Anything mm. you want to talk about? Mm. Just to allow that conversation to start. And as so many people said, as um, Johnny said in that package, it was the moment that someone said, you know, I think you, could, you can get through this. Mm. He'd never had anyone connect with him on that personal level before. And that's an extraordinary comment, isn't it, in a sense? And not directly related to this conversation, but I think germane to it, perhaps, is loneliness is on the up, we see, mm. uh, a survey that people maybe... Uh, go through life and they don't retain the friendships or the family bonds mm. that previous generations enjoyed. Is that something you've observed? Certainly. I mean, globally, if you look at rates of suicide around the world, you'll see the, the countries that are doing best, the ones that have the lowest rates of suicide, are actually some of the Caribbean islands where the communities are small, family ties are really close, where where your actions and accountability for how you live and what you do are seen and the whole person is held in and, and, and raised. And so, um, and the opposite of that, where you've, you see high rates of suicide, you see high rates of social dislocation. And, um, you know, we were just looking at, at this yesterday, that actually high rates of suicide and mental health conditions 
coexist with those from migrant populations because it's the dislocation, it's the taking out of your natural context that's mm. very disorientating for people. Uh, and, and so, as you say, suicide is a, is a, is a very good proxy for uh, evaluating how compassionate a society is, how close-knit, how open, uh, and, and how we are raising individuals in, in, in the palm of society's hand rather than sort of um, mm -hmm. So maybe part of our growing up, we need to learn to value friendships, to develop them, to maintain them, to nurture them. To have those skills. They uh, will be useful to us at Throughout some point. life, uh, but also to develop um, that kind of relationship with yourself because you are mm. the person that you're going to... Be more self-aware. And more compassionate. For Let's continue our conversation in just a moment. You're watching Insight. More on breaking the stigma surrounding men's mental health issues. And our conversation continues in just a moment.